How many of you hate wearing glasses? How many of you wear glasses and you're like, I'm okay with that? A few of you, you're okay. I no wait. Would you rather have great eyesight too? That's that's kind of the question. How many of you are happy that your eyesight's bad and you get to wear glasses? Okay, a couple freaks out there. Of course, there's always going to be a couple. I, you have watched. If you've been here long enough, you have watched me begin as a pastor who didn't need glasses. To a pastor who has to wear glasses. I have to, what? Keep going. No, no, we're going to shoot. It's funny. I want to know what. Somebody back here said you needed them when you got here. You just didn't think you did. That's actually true. <laughs> I, I was a stubborn individual when I first got here. I would be have no problem walking around like this. What happens, those of you who wear glasses, tell those uh, uh, our, uh, our, our, our blessed people who don't need those eyeballs what it's like to go without your glasses. What happens in your head? You get an intense what? Headache. I had a headache for like a year. And I was just like, I don't need glasses. I don't, I, I, I'm perfectly fine. Um, I, I refuse to get them. One of the problems, actually I was watching a show called Lost, and there was an episode there where he had headaches, and I'm like, oh, maybe that's what's wrong with me. So I went to the eye doctor, and they said, yep, you're blind. You need glasses. <laughs> and then I said, that's fine. Uh, what are they, 100 bucks? No problem. And it's like, no, you need bifocals. I'm like, bifocals are for old people. <laughs> and he said, that's true. You need, <laughs> you need, he actually said, I need trifocals. And I said, I can't afford them. So I give me give me the give me the ones so I can read cuz I have to read. I'm a pastor, that's why I get all my head my headaches. I need glasses so I can read. So they gave me reading glasses. So up close I could read and I wouldn't get a headache, but then every other time when I was looking out forward, I would I would get a headache. I I developed this nasty habit. You guys I still do it to this day. Of what? Taking off, huh? I know, it drives you crazy, doesn't it? Huh? You know why I did it? A couple reasons. Number one, when I had these glasses where I was only needing them to read, I would get a headache when I looked at you. So I had to take them off. That was the, the main reason that I did it. I had a second reason, too. When I take the glasses off, I can't see you. So if you're looking at your phone, <laughs> or you're yawning, or going to sleep... I didn't know it. I, for, I, I create an illusion in my head where I just picture all of you are looking at me like this. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? <laughs> me and Moses in denial. That's my only joke. You better laugh at that one. Other than, huh? <laughs> we never heard that one. Um, but... So one of you, I think, I'm not going to tell who the person was, but somebody in this church actually blessed me, and they're like, dude, stop taking off your glasses. We're going to bless you with a, a gift. Go to the doctor and get your eyes checked. We're going to pay for the examination. It's going to be a, a nice place, and it was a nice place, except they dilute your eyes, not just the, one of those, the doctors I was going to. Uh, it was it dilute your eyes. No, they diluted my eyes. I couldn't see. It was diluted. <laughs> what you call it? Okay, we'll pretend you're right. They dilated my eyes. And, and By the way, never get your eyes dilated and then pick out your glasses. That was stupid. I did that. They're like, how's it look? Remember them big round ones I had for a long time? That was those right there. Like, oh, I look awesome. <laughs> I couldn't tell. But anyway, they dilute, They did that. They dilated my eyes. I thought they diluted them because they put something in there and I couldn't see. And then, and then they checked it and they said, you're, you're good, but you do need the bifocals. And I got the bifocals. I didn't get the tries. I don't want to try trifocals. That's, that, that, I ain't doing that. But anyway, they said, one day you'll really need those. But now I can keep them on. And I don't have to take them off so much. And I don't get a headache. But there's been a problem. There's been a... There's been there's been an adverse problem. There's there's something that that happened. I used to be able to see 
when I could take them off every now and then. Now, because the first thing I do is I wake up, I put these things on. I can't see at all with them on. I mean, I, if I want to read something, that's, that's always killed me. I can't read it. And when I really t- I take it off, it's like you're underwater. I can't see a thing. And I, I'll be the first one to admit, I hate my eyes. And if there's one thing in heaven that I'm looking forward to, there's many, many different things that I'm looking forward to. And some of you, you're in different places. Maybe it's uh, the new legs or, or new lungs. One of the things I'm looking forward to is being able to get to heaven and have brand new eyeballs. Amen? You blind people with me? Amen. I want to be able to see. Right there. Well, did anyone find my little red Bible? Oh, man. That's okay. I'm just, I'll just pick through the Bible. Here it is. Who ran over there? (laughs) (laughs) You all see that commercial where you're trying to get you're trying to get your little kid to. (laughs) There it is. Oh man. What's that old saying? A sucker boy. Anyway, no, no, no. That's fine. I just I care about you, Darren. I wanted you to do some exercising. So after you left and I sat down, I'm like, oh, man, I feel bad, but not real bad. Like I was going to like just I, I, I've gotten over it. I've moved on. You should, too. <laughs> so um, did, did you know the Bible talks a lot about seeing, right? Talks a lot about blindness. What's what's the most famous blind story in the Bible? The what? The Paul? So it was Saul. You think you think that that was? Man, I don't read your Bible. I like the I like the one. I like the one in John chapter nine. It's probably the one that you that you're doing. It, um, there was one time in the Bible. This is the one I think that's. It's the most famous that you sing about it all the time. How many of you sing? I won't. Was blind. We ought to start singing like that. But now, <laughs> that, that, <laughs> just stop it. It was like he saw this poopy diaper. Ew. That that phrase, "I once was blind, but now I see," was taken from a famous passage in the Bible, John chapter nine, where where there was a blind guy. Right? Remember the Pharisees? They they, they gave Jesus probably. I always thought, and, and um, I asked if on on my different Facebook sites, anytime I, I get around people, one of the reasons I do so many things outside of the church is I increase my fishing pond, if you will, and I, I try to ask these tough questions to get people to think. Well, somebody asked Jesus a tough question. And there was this guy, he was blind since birth, I believe. Yeah, he was blind since birth, John chapter 9. And the Pharisees came up and they tried to ask him a deep theological question. Here's the question. He said, was this man born, who was born blind, did he sin or did his parents sin? Remember the question? That is, that's a pretty deep question if you think about it. Because why would they ask that? Because they thought... And how many of you came from a church, or maybe you believe this now, and if you came from a church, see, I won't know the difference, came from a church that every time a problem happens, you must be doing something bad. Anybody? There's a couple of you here, right there. Well, the Pharisees thought the same way. If you were, if you were blind, that was punishment from God, okay? I'm being punished from God because I'm losing my eyesight, or, or whatever. What, you, you, you've got a lot of bad going on. I think, and, and I don't want to make light of it, it was, um, it was a family that, here, I'm trying to go back to Sunday school. I think Miss Krista was telling about us that, that since, what, for the last 20 years, they've lost, they have five kids. They've lost four kids. Is that, was that it? Four out of five kids. You know, some, some people, some upright Christians, righteous people would look back at them and said, they must be doing something wrong, that God is continuing to punish them. So they came up to Jesus and they said, this guy was born blind. So tell me, Jesus, and they didn't have glasses, but if they did, they'd take them off. Was it this man who sinned, or was it his parents who sinned? That's a great theological question. Why? Why? Because it's a theological conundrum. If the man sinned, 
how did he sin in the womb? I mean, we're, we've got the sinful nature inside of us, and that's, that's kind of a, a, of a teaching that continued to be uh, taught. Well, it was, it's in the Old Testament, but it even explored even more in the New Testament. But the man couldn't have possibly have done that, right? Because he was born blind. He was born with the punishment before he actually did the crime. Or his parents sinned. Well, I don't make any sense either, does it? Why are you punishing the kid because of what the parents did? And, 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 and it was in Old Testament. God actually says, um, now there is, there is the teaching in there, you know, I will, uh, the, the sins of the father will be transferred onto the kids right there and, and, and misapplied. That means that God's going to punish the kids. Actually, what it means is that the sins are going to be learned by the kids, and the kids are going to react to sins, and when they do, eventually it keeps growing, they keep getting punished. So that's a tough theological question. Jesus flipped it, though. He, he was like, he, he was like, neither. This guy didn't sin? Well, they did. I mean, he sinned, but that's not why he's blind. And his parents, they've sinned, but it's not... The kid's not blind because of that. He's, he was blind at birth because of why? Anybody know the answer? I know some of you are reading it there. To give glory to God. And I think, I think is that the part where he does the loogie? <sighs> he, he, he gets a hawker. This is Jesus. Okay? He, he sniffs back okay? and, and he pulls that snot. You don't think Jesus had snot? He pulls that snot back in. Are you recording that? Hey, Greg, cut this part out. Then Baptists believe Jesus had snot. And he gets a snot up in his throat. That's why I take my glasses off. I can't see anybody. And he goes, whoo, right in the dirt. And he goes up there and he puts it in the eyes. Like, why would he do that? I believe, go back to Adam, how are we made? From dirt. I believe Jesus gives a big old hawk loogie in the dirt, forms a little eyeball, and he goes, pluck, pluck, creates two new eyes. Isn't that cool? Here's something, though, I want to kind of take you even a little bit further. Jesus, though he was about healing the blind man, and though he had compassion on the blind, blind man, when, whenever we read about these healings in the Bible, a lot of times there was something more at work here. There was a bigger teaching Jesus wanted to get to you. Okay? And... Uh, he want, we're going to read here a section of this here in a second, and John 9, go there if you haven't already, um, that I believe is, is the meat behind what Jesus was, was actually trying to, to, uh, to, uh, to point out. And he used this, this man's blindness as a way to bring glory to God. So, this is after the fact. We're reading after the fact. John 9, we're going to start with... 39. Okay? And this is, he's talking to the Pharisees overheard this. Um, ready? Here's what he said. Jesus said this. Oh, they're red letters, so they're better than the black, right? Don't get me started. For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. And some Pharisees who were with him heard this, and, and, and they asked, and they said, What? Are we blind too? They probably said it just like that. And Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. I believe the, the, the deeper... Or, or, or not even the surface, but it's it's actually pretty clear. The clear teaching that Jesus wanted to illustrate with this other man was that there's something called spiritual blindness. And then without Jesus, you can't see if it is. How many of you are like me? You came to Christ later in life. One, two, there's, there's a few of you right there. I can see them. Brooke, you too? You weren't, you weren't born a Christian? Anybody born a Christian? Oh, good. Nobody fell for it. <laughs> knock you out. We're going to talk later. Um, 
How many of you came to Christ earlier in life, though? You were real young. You was, you was a kid. Kyle, yeah. Kyle, I was baptized. You baptized soon after. I mean, that was cool. So, uh, okay, if, if I, want, I, want, I want to get to uh, be able to talk to everybody here on the same level. Think back, not to when you first, before you was a Christian, but think back, and if, and if you came to Christ as, as a young person, you may not even be able to think back to this part. So think about the last person you tried to talk to Jesus about, okay? That, and, I, and I hope that was just the other day. Right? And think about how stupid they were. You could tell somebody, and I see this, and because this was me, this was me. Again, John LaFont, they, uh, pray for them. I, Colleen was sick. They took her home real quick. But um, the first time I went to Sunday school, they was doing around. I told you all this before. They had like 20 people in there, and they'd go around doing the prayer request. Everybody had to do a prayer request. And, they, and, and John LaFont was a Sunday school teacher, and they set me up. They put me right by him, and I was sitting by him, and they went the other way, so I had time to think. So and they did this on purpose. Everybody gave their prayer request. Got to me and says, how about you, Mike? Do you have a prayer request? And I'm like, you know what? No, I don't. But I, I, I just hope you guys get all your wishes. Right? Because I thought that's what they were doing. They were wishing for stuff. All right? I didn't realize that they were talking to God. I was very dumb and stuff. Think about the last time, though, that, that you explained Jesus. Or you tried to explain Something about Jesus. You just tried to explain. I was in a philosophy class one time, and and, and they were talking about uh, uh, serving gods back then. I'm like, well, what if you serve God just because you love Him? And and he looked at me, and he took his eyeballs off too, and he said, "What are you talking about, loving God? That's an interesting concept. You actually love this invisible." I mean, he he was clueless. I mean, you could you could even do. In children's church, we, we, we do the simple things, right? You've probably seen this diagram right here. You, you, you draw it out. You've got this little cliff here and this bottomless pit. Um, and then you do this right here. And then you do a bottomless pit. And if there's a lot of boys and wanes in the class, you put fire down here. And you put, like, people screaming. And that's why you'll probably want to get a, a, a new, uh, ah, you know, for fun. That's, what, that's why I won't be over there that much. But anyway, and then you put... But, this is my artist. You put a guy right here, okay? Have you seen this picture? You never seen this picture? Oh, it's, you've seen it? You saw it! You see it right here. And then you got one over here, God, okay? And we all try to go to God, but we can't get to him. Why? Because there's this great gap between us. And there's a bunch of sin. And because you have sin, I'm trying to explain it to, as I would, uh, uh, somebody in the kids, uh, without the fire, and... And, and you can't cross it. There's nothing that you can do. If you try to go, you, you, you just fall, always fall short. Everyone who tries to go to God falls short of the glory of God, right? But Jesus, right? Made a way. Did, am I right? Am, am I doing this right? Shut up. That's beautiful. You must not you must be lost because everybody else clearly see what I did was that brilliant. But have you ever tried to explain Jesus and they just don't <laughs> Oh look it's beautiful. No anyway. If you ever try to explain Jesus to somebody who was an unbeliever, or you try to explain the gospel simply, they just, they look at you like you're stupid. They just, they don't get it. Why? Because they don't get it. They can't get it. The Bible tells you that. Now, there are people out there who, who are not Christian. I'm going to keep this marker over here, right here, just in case I need it. Put it over here. I got two more. I did put that up here, didn't I? Yeah. I'll leave those on because it drives Miss Nelly crazy. Doesn't it? Say, take him. You, do you have to believe in God to understand moral, morality? So we got some head shaking. No, it says in Romans 2 that everybody has a conscience. So... A non-Christian, an unbeliever, can understand 
something about morality, right? But they really can't understand morality in light of who God is. Can a non-Christian understand religion? Can a Muslim understand religion? Yes, they can understand a religion. Can they understand it in light of who God is? What, what will we have right here? How many of you have been called a hypocrite? Just the, most of you like live in life were clear, but some of you called a hypocrite, right? Christians are hypocrites. Have you ever heard the phrase? Is that a true statement? No. Stand up, Andrew. <laughs> you shouldn't have laughed at my picture. Real quick, stand up. Is art subjective or absolute? <laughs> Turn around. It's, it's, uh, Shut up. It's absolute Shh. to me, but... Um... <laughs> Step forward. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Say hi. Say hello, Andrew. Hello, Andrew. Andrew is the pastor's kid. <laughs> stand up, stand up, stand up. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Why do you know something I don't? No, I know nothing. <laughs> this is funny to you. What have you done? I've done lots. <laughs> <laughs> He's a pastor's kid, okay? Now, you, you believe in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Yeah, then you're yes. a Christian. So, are there people out there, because it doesn't happen to me, that would look at Andrew and say, Andrew professes Christianity. But sometimes, and remember, yes, somebody knows something. <laughs> <laughs> She's laughing a lot here. She's seen you. Sometimes Andrew sins. Yeah. And therefore you're a hypocrite. What's the message of the gospel? We are all sinners. What do they think the message of the gospel is? Because they don't understand it. They think the message of the gospel is this. You've got to be good to go in heaven. Andrew is far. Far, 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 far from good. They don't really understand the standard. They're dark. They're dark. Absolutely dark. I was, I was, uh, the other day I was looking at a website and um, there was this, uh, um, Tell me, raise your hand if, you, if you've heard about it. There's an atheist group out there, and my mind is trying to, trying to picture this. There's an atheist group out there that says that um, what they're doing is they're trying to find kids like Andrew and, and, and you three who have grown up in the church your whole life, and you're getting out, you're getting ready to go into college or into the military or the Air Force. That's a good way to go, too. Um, what was it? The Air Force is like the military, except it has recess um, <laughs> and nap time. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, good luck with that. And they're trying to capture you people to, to and, and what they do is they fill out this form, and they send you this form, and, and, and you sign it. And what it is, it's cussing at the Holy Spirit. They're trying to get you to blasphemy the Holy Spirit. Why would they do that? Do you know Fletcher? You just here's what Jesus said. Jesus said in Mark three twenty nine, whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. So what this atheist side is saying is that they're trying to get our, our these young Christians who are eighteen, nineteen, twenty years old to cuss at the Holy Spirit. And then by doing it, they kind of lose their salvation, if you will, and, they, and, then, and they've committed an eternal sin and they'll never be saved. Absolutely. You know what that is? That is an example of somebody being totally blind to what God says and trying to use that to make a point. 
Does anyone know what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is? I hope so, because this, this, this question actually comes up. When Jesus was there, um, he, was, he was doing miracles. Pharisees came up to him and, and saw the miracles. You couldn't deny that. When you got a blind guy who can now see, you can't deny the miracles. When you, see, when, when you feed 5,000 people with some crackers and some anchovies, you can't deny the miracle. What they did was they saw what Jesus did and they said, it's by Beelzebub that he does this. By Satan. And Jesus turns to him and he says, he says, you know, you can talk smack about, this is the MIV, Mike International Version, you can talk smack about me, but if you talk smack about the Holy Spirit, you're never going to be forgiven. What was he saying? What was he saying? He was saying this. If you look at the work that Jesus did, and, 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 and it's, not, it's not just Jesus who was telling them, I'm the Savior, okay? And remember what happened to Peter. Peter says, Jesus says, who am I, Peter? Who am I? And Peter looks at him and said, you're the Son of Man. You're the Messiah. You are, you are, you're, you're him. You're, you're the Messiah. And, and Jesus said, blessed are you, Peter, because you didn't get this on your own. You didn't get this from anyone. You got it from God the Father. And God the Father uses the Holy Spirit to tell us right there. So when you tell, when you look at Jesus and you say, he, it's by the devil that he's doing this, or in our modern day, it's by man. I was talking to a woman the other day, and she's like, well, I just don't, I don't believe in all that other stuff. Why can't we just look at Jesus as a good teacher? And I'm like, good luck with that. Because he said he was something else. And the Holy Spirit testifies that he's the Son of Man, that he's the Son of God, that he is God incarnate, that he's Emmanuel, that he is the God-man. And if you reject that, if you say he's anything else, he does those things by miracles, or he does those things because the church made it up, or you say that he, he, he's just a good teacher, well, you tell the Holy Spirit you're a liar. And if you do that to the day you die, you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And for that, there can be no forgiveness. That's what it means, blasphemy the Holy Spirit. But they're blind. They can't see it. They're absolutely 100% blind on the spiritual things right here. Mm. Here's the true statement I want you to walk away with today. And I'm skipping some stuff because I got to talking. Don't you say Amen. A person who doesn't have Christ is blind. They are in the dark. The only way they can see is believe the Holy Spirit testimony that Jesus, the God-man, paid the price for them. We're, I'm having the kids learn John 3.16 and all the way through 20, uh, 21. They started Hebrews this week. We're going to... Uh, some of those kids are going to memorize the entire first chapter of Hebrews. It's going to be pretty powerful. Um, but I like this. I like 17. It says, For God, He didn't send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe in Him stands condemned already, because He hasn't believed in the name of the one and the only. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but man loved darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light, and will not come into light for their fear that their deeds were exposed. You stay in the dark, you don't understand. That's why in, in 2 Corinthians, it says, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says this. It says, We, however, have a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age and the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden from God uh, and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it. If they had, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of the glory. However, it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind is conceived. What God has prepared for those who love him. But God revealed it to us by his spirit, the Holy Spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one understands the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. We have not received the spirit of the world, and it goes on and on and on, that we have the mind of Christ through the Holy Spirit. Everyone else, they're blind to it. What does that mean to us? I'm going to tell you one thing it means to us. And I'm sitting back there, and, and, and it's something that you know what? And sometimes it drives me crazy. And that's something that we are, we bet, I don't know what we need to do, but we need to figure this out. The worship sometimes is pathetic. I once was blind and now I can see. Where's the excitement? I 
I was a blind man. I couldn't see a thing, Jesus. And you did that for me. Where's the excitement? I'm not beating us up because there's something missing. And, and maybe it's missing, I think Randy pointed this out, it, it's missing every, it's, it's missing in those places that, that seem to excel in, in theology. Those places that are very reserved, they, they know God's word and, and they are conservative in their theological, but sometimes they lack a little bit in, in, in the worship area. I was like, that, that's baloney. We should know so much about God that it should make us scream. I once was blind and now I can see. Our worship is lacking. And it shouldn't be the case, especially given who we are in Christ Jesus. That's one thing it means. Well, let me ask you this, and this is totally somewhere else. This is just more teaching. Is it possible for somebody who is a Christian to still be in the dark? What do you think? Go ahead. Yes? Raise your hand. Only one of you. No. Okay. Is it possible? Oh, see, I'm, I'm gonna count when I'm done. See, if somebody never raise hand, we'll just keep doing it. <laughs> Is it possible? Yes or no? For a Christian, I'm not gonna beat you up. I promise. I won't say anything bad. I won't make fun of you. Nate will probably, but <laughs> that's his gift. Is it possible for a Christian? Who can see to still be in the dark? Raise your hand. Okay. It's possible for us to be in the dark about some things. About some things. Some things. Okay. So that's why you didn't want to say yes or no, because it's... So you think it was a trick question. How many of you think I'm trying to give a trick question? <laughs> so one, two, three, four. Okay, forget it then. All right. I think the answer is, Miss, Miss, Miss B, you're right. It's possible that we're in the dark on some things. And then I would say that it's probable that we're in the, drop, in the dark on other things. Let me explain. The two, at least two places real quick, and I'll get you out. Of, oh, I don't have a lot of time. There's two possible places that, that a Christian can be in the dark. How many of you like fish? Anybody see that mudding thing? Anybody ever do that stupid stuff? You stick your hand in the mouth and you're the bait? You realize that's not bright? Wow! Well, so stick in your finger electrical socket. <laughs> Woo! Really? You've done that? I've done that quite a few times. It, can catfish. Huh? I'm going to pray about it. <laughs> Give me a sign, Jesus. <laughs> No, uh, I don't want to stick my hand. The water, you can't see in the water. You, uh, how many of you have got good eyesight? Raise your hand, you got 20-20. Nate, you have good eyesight. You go in there and you find a big old hole, right? You're feeling around. You can't just look in there with some goggles and, and find the hole. Why not? Because the water's dirty. Because the water's dirty. But you've got good eyesight, so you can look in the water and you, can, you can't see past the dirt. you still got to feel around. So you could have good eyesight, but the environment in which you live in is so disgustingly muddy you can't see it right. That's kind of what I talked about the kids today. Uh, a little bit. Uh, w with the roadkill. The culture that we live in is really dirty. Kyle was watching you debate somebody the other day on, uh, I think it was you debating, uh, about abortion. And what's the common argument? That they have against that, it's uh, and, and they're moral people. They're, they're moral people, right? They understand morality. They're moral people, and then and they say this. They said, um, "Well, you know, I kind of want to support abortion because it's not right to bring what? What is it? Bring a child up in an unloved home or in a bad environment." 
how many think that it's how many think that it's a bad thing to bring up a kid in a in, in a bad environment? How many think? Yeah, how many, how many think it, that's a good thing? Okay, good. <laughs> there, nobody. It's bad to bring a child up in a bad environment, right? So the solution is to kill the child. <laughs> See, that's the kind of flip flop moral we, that we have right there. We, I mean, you're not thinking. You're not thinking. How many of you grew up in a bad environment? Other than Nate, because your mom's right there. Think, 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 think. <laughs> think, think, think if your mom's right here. No, no, no. How, what are you saying? You're a... That's why I keep my eyeballs off. How many of you, those obstacles, though, you traversed? And you got through? You don't kill a child because you predetermined that they're too stupid to go past an obstacle? Come on. You don't pre-kill a child. I mean, that's, that's, but that's the world we live in. It's so dark. I mean, they got, the, our culture, it's post-Christian. What's post-Christian means? They're not Christians anymore. They're not. They are those who've never seen the light, who don't understand morality in light of God. They don't understand a philosophical worldview in light of God. They don't understand God. They're now telling us what is right and what is wrong. And it's so murky, sometimes we can't see. The churches, they're dropping like flies. You can put a list of churches up there. You put them, okay, we got the Episcopalians, we got the Lutherans, we got the Baptists, we got the Southern Baptists, we got the Great Commission Baptists, which we used to be Southern. I don't know what we are nowadays. I was going to say, we're, we should make up a new name for who we are. I like Christians. You want to go with that? that. We'll go with Christians. Yep. The The way, Acts, very good. How about. The munchkins. That takes a real man to admit. I'm a munchkin. <laughs> They're dropping like flies, though. They don't understand. I don't know. Is it wrong to get married if you're like this? What? Are you blind? Yeah, they are. They can't see. They can't see. Is it, is it wrong to marry six women as one man? I don't know if they really love them. Are you blind? Yeah, you are. But they're Christians. That's what's freaking me out. It's because they're in such a muddy environment. They do not understand uh, morals and truth, apparently, because it's so murky. There's another way, too. There's another way. Um, And let me, what time is it? Somebody move that clock back just 10 minutes because I just need a few more. Well, somebody said no, didn't they? I don't have my eyeballs on. I got plenty of time. First Thessalonians 5 says, Do not squelch. I think that's King James Version. I looked at the NIV. The NIV says, what was it, First Thessalonians 5.19 says, Do not put out the Spirit's fire. The Holy Spirit's fire. How many of you are Christian? The rest of you, I'll tell you about Jesus later, but you need to stay. Okay. Oh, man, that's the first time we got to admit it. How many of you have ever sinned? Just a couple of you. Wake up. Oh, that's my new thing. <laughs> That's my new thing. I'm keeping this up there. Be- what are you looking at me like that? Hey, baptize you with water. <laughs> Did I? You know where I sleep, but you don't know if I'm asleep. Okay. Every time you sin, every time you sin, inside of you, the Holy Spirit will scream. The Holy Spirit is there to light up those dark thoughts. Those dark thoughts. So, so as you get closer to a sin, He screams. And, and if you're good at it, you can put the fire out. 
And you can make it dark. By the way, I want you to get this because uh, if there's anything that I want you to do is, is listen to the Holy Spirit. And this is something that we as Christians do a lot and we become blind. Okay? The temptation comes or the tempter comes and, and, and we're put in a place where we're tempted. Whatever it is, I don't know if you suffer from rage and you've got a problem with, with giving in rage while you're driving and you know that tempter's there, right there. And, and it's, it's like God's like, you need to calm down. You need, you need to be praying right here. You need to be loving on Jesus. You need to be loving on that. You take this and you, you spray it out and you get them out as possible. So as soon as you get it dark, you can feel really good about yourself when you do the sin. That's the way, that is how it is with, with, with sin. The two can't coexist. Don't believe me? Next time you're tempted, start praying. Get out the Bible. What happens? It goes away. But I don't want that. I want to be in the dark. Why? So you can sin. You put that fire out. Can I ask you what's going to happen? Next time that temptation comes, the fire will be there. But it's going to be harder. Maybe less dim. Not as loud. And if you refuse to listen to the Holy Spirit in your life, each and every time you do this, it'll eventually get to the point where in that area, Miss B, like you said, the light doesn't shine and you're blind. How could it even be possible that Mr. Smith, Mr. Christian Smith, could have had such an adulterous affair. He was such an upright deacon in the church. Oh, it's because they put the fire out way too many times in their lives. And it was dark. They didn't even realize how far they were. Because they were dumb. They were blind. They were fishing for something. And they suffered the ramifications. So yes, it is possible. <sighs> What's the million dollar question? No, I'm not going to do that. There's one more type of spiritual eyesight problem that I believe all Christians suffer from. Let me share this passage with you. 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says this. And this is every one of us. Now we see, but a poor reflection is in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am known. I want to be very careful here. There are uh, Christian... There are Christian churches, Christian thought out there that, that are more agnostic than they are Christian. There's this, this statement, the belief that, that we can't know anything about God. And we can't really know anything about spiritual matters. And I absolutely reject that because even an atheist, even an unbeliever knows something about God. Romans 1.19, since what they know about God, it, it's made perfectly clear. All they need to know about God is given to them. Therefore, they're, not, they're, they're without excuse on the day that he judges them. There's plenty to know about God. We as Christians, having the Holy Spirit, having the Bible, understand it. We know things about God. You know Jesus. You know the Father. You know the Son. You know what He says is right. You know what He says is wrong. But here is the truth. You don't see all that well in this world. You don't have perfect vision. Krista tell me a story today about her friend who, who was murdered. I don't even know what to say. I can't even possibly answer the question why. Why do good people suffer? There's a the I know that's the a lot. Randy's probably back there, like, well, let's talk about. No, I ain't even go there. Can somebody understand, a Jehovah Witness came to my door and says, I reject the Trinity because we can't understand it. I'm like, what, you think you can understand the triune nature of God? Can you understand the eternal nature of God? God is eternal. Can you understand that? There are things that we just don't know. We don't have perfect vision on this side of the earth. What's our response to that? I think I began, the, I began the sermon with that, didn't I? That's okay to long for heaven. It's okay to, to, to want to see God the way He is. It's 
it's okay to want to see with new eyes, new sight. To be able to come into the throne. I mean, can you picture the day? I don't know what it looks like. I heard the street's got a lot of gold on it. And I don't know if we're walking down the big street and there Jesus is on his throne with every single person there right there wait, waiting for you. Nothing hindering our eyesight. And a look at him and maybe even come up and fall underneath. What's that song I can only imagine? Will I dance? Probably not me. I don't know if you get the gift of dancing by then. I can't dance. I truly am a white guy. But wouldn't it be neat just to look at him the way he is? And be able to just testify right there. Jesus, I was, man, I was blind. But now, now I see. And that's nothing I did. But you, I love you so much. Let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, you, yeah. You've given us believers the Holy Spirit inside of us. Yes, so many, and I know I, I preach them. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, Father. If it is, I, I, I pray for forgiveness and guidance and direction. So many sermons that is like, what shall we do? What shall we do? What Tell us what to do. What? How do we live? How do we live our lives? How do we do this? How do we do that? Father, there's, there's many more subjects that we, need to, we really need to preach on. There's nothing that we do. We don't believe in you because it's, we're highly intelligent. We don't know the Son because of something that was revealed to us by a cool-sounding pastor or a deep study. I studied for 20 years and I concluded that Jesus is God. No, you didn't. This was revealed to you by the Father through the Holy Spirit who has made Him known. And if a person rejects that, from this day to that day, it blasphemy the Holy Spirit. Those of us who have accepted the Holy Spirit, all we can do, all we can respond is this. I once was blind. But now, now I see. And the natural response is worship. Well, my prayer is that this church starts worshiping. Father, we worship, so we do, we worship with our tithes, we worship with the word, we worship with prayers, but we worship with song too. And if our heart's not in it, Father, then I'm asking for the Holy Spirit to come inside of us. I'm asking for the Holy Spirit just to light that fire on us. I'm asking for it right now. Father, as we all stand here in just a second, Father, give you honor and glory. And the music starts playing. Let this not be a time to where we just read some words on the screen. Let this not be a time to where we just, we're doing the next thing. Let our hearts speak. Let the worship team lead us. Let the Holy Spirit fill us. And let us sing with our hearts the joy that we have in you. Let it be real. It is in the precious and most holy name I pray. Amen.